On today's episode, we have another candidate for the next Gigafactory location. Tesla finally inks a deal for Indonesian nickel supply. California attempts to derail autopilot. And FSD beta version 10.69 is on the way. So let's get going. We have two major signs coming up in the past week that have pointed towards Canada as the next location for a Tesla Gigafactory. During the annual shareholders meeting, Elon announced that he would reveal the location of Tesla's next manufacturing plant before the end of this year, and then he asked the crowd on hand, where should we build it? Obviously, people yelled a bunch of random stuff and there was just an inaudible noise, but Elon said, we got a lot of Canada. I am half Canadian, maybe we should. I don't know how many people at the meeting in Austin, Texas actually said Canada, but further investigation into public records from the Canadian government reveals that Tesla has been actively lobbying with the provincial government of Ontario as recently as July 2022. In Canada, all companies must publicly disclose their lobbying efforts with the government. So, a quick check by website Electric Autonomy Canada revealed that Tesla is actively engaging with Canadian officials on the subject of an advanced manufacturing facility. Tesla specifically writes in their report, Engage with the government and its agencies to identify opportunities for industrial and or advanced manufacturing facility permitting reforms with the intent to increase the competitiveness of Ontario and its ability to attract capital investment through establishing approval timeframes that are competitive with high growth manufacturing locations in North America while also working with government to identify or align incentive programs that could further increase the attractiveness of Ontario for industrial and or advanced manufacturing investment. So, this is very exciting for any Tesla enthusiast, and if you didn't already know, we are all Canadians here at the channel and we are based in Ontario, so this is doubly exciting for us personally. Quick question. If they do start building this Gigafactory anywhere near the Tesla Space HQ, would you all be interested in seeing us document the project with drone video and exclusive content and stuff like that? I don't know the logistics of it, but if you all would support something like that, then we can probably figure it out. So let us know in the comments below. Anyway, this actually aligns with the goals that have been set out by our various levels of government here in Canada and Ontario which is the most heavily populated province in Canada. It's still like 90% forest and 10% people, but for Canada, that's crowded. The Canadian federal government is very keen on transitioning our resource-based economy to support more renewable energy. Traditionally, Canada has been funded by the oil and gas sector, but most agree that this will come to an end someday soon, so we need to pivot towards the future. Others in Canada will still fight this to the death, and we call them Albertans. Luckily, Canada is very rich in metals. Specifically, we have plenty of nickel, lithium, cobalt, aluminum, manganese, graphite, basically all of the ingredients for lithium-ion batteries. Most of these mineral deposits are in the northern regions of the country, and one of those areas in particular is in northern Ontario, a mineral deposit nicknamed the Ring of Fire. Ontario's premier, who is kind of like a governor, has made it a specific goal to use these resources in the Ring of Fire to supply the electric vehicle industry. That is this guy, Doug Ford. If you remember Toronto's infamous crack-smoking mayor, Rob Ford, that's his brother. He's kind of like a Wish.com version of Donald Trump. He's fine, it could be worse. What's baffling about Doug Ford is that one of the first things he did when he came to power was to cut every single tax credit available for electric cars and green energy. He still thinks that only millionaires buy electric cars because they all cost $100,000 or more. So he doesn't support people buying Teslas, but he does want to get in on the money that Elon has been throwing around with his gigafactories. And knowing Doug Ford, he's one of those politicians that will just delete any kind of regulation that is standing in the way of making more money. 
So I feel like him and Elon would actually get along pretty well because we know that Elon is also no fan of being slowed down by red tape and big government. The province of Quebec is also an option that people have brought up. That's French Canada, but they just introduced this crazy new law that basically says you're not allowed to speak English or do business in English in Quebec. And that might be a slight exaggeration, but not that much. They have language police in Quebec. It's a wild place. So unless Elon is willing to learn French, I can't see that working out so well. Either way, during his presentation last week, Elon estimated that Tesla would build about 10 or 12 gigafactories in total. So eventually one has to land in Canada. He said that each Tesla factory would have an average output of about 1.5 million to 2 million cars. And Elon maintained his long-standing goal that Tesla would reach a volume of 20 million cars per year by 2030. Also, just wanted to let you know about our Discord server. We've got over 1,500 members and host regular live watch parties within the community. We have some big events coming up for the first Starship launch, Artemis launch, and Tesla AI day. So if you aren't already, join our Discord server using the link in the description. For the first time in months now, we have news out of Indonesia. And it seems that Tesla has finally reached a deal with the South Asian country for the purchase of their nickel metal to the tune of about 5 billion US dollars. Coordinating Minister for Maritime and Investment Affairs Luhut Panjaitan made a statement to CNBC Indonesia that detailed what exactly had been agreed to. Specifically, he said that Tesla has signed a five-year contract with some nickel companies based in Morawali, a regency in central Sulawesi province. The nickel purchased is reportedly, and unsurprisingly, intended for use in Tesla batteries. The Indonesian minister continued to say, We are still in constant negotiation with Tesla, but they have started buying two excellent products from Indonesia. And constant negotiation seems to be the important bit here. This deal is specifically about the products Tesla has agreed to buy, but the Indonesian government seems dead set on becoming a major electric vehicle production hub. So, much like Canada, they're likely to keep pressuring Tesla and other EV producers for more business. This is a very important deal for the economy of a small nation like Indonesia, and this seems to mark the beginning of a boom period for the country. We're still pretty confident that this also becomes the future home of one of those dozen or so Tesla gigafactories. In an unexpected turn of events, the US state of California has taken a drastic move to pressure Tesla on their autopilot and full self-driving features. The stakes are high and deadlines are short. So this is another case of someone complaining that autopilot and full self-driving are misleading names for what the driver assist features actually do. And sure, they probably are, but it's called marketing. Anyway, California's Department of Motor Vehicles has come out swinging this time with not one, but two filings with the Office of Administrative Hearings, claiming that Tesla is falsely promoting those systems as autonomous. The goal here is that the DMV wants to force Tesla to change the names of their features and the company has just two weeks to submit their response. The problem is that the DMV wields a significant amount of power here and if they aren't satisfied with Tesla's decision, they can temporarily revoke Tesla's license to operate as a vehicle manufacturer and auto dealer in California which is currently the home of Tesla's most productive car factory, so that would be bad. Elon Musk has announced that the next major update for Tesla's full self-driving beta software version 10.69 is coming on August 20th. Okay, it's not actually going to be version 69. He's talking about the update to version 10.13, which has been a very long hyped and significant update that we have been waiting on for a while now. This update is supposed to bring a host of improvements to how the semi-autonomous cars handle unprotected left turns, pedestrians, cyclists, and even animals. 
What's really interesting is that Elon specifically said on Twitter last month that users outside of California will see the most improvements with 10.13. So this would insinuate that Tesla is now incorporating a lot of new training data collected by the expanded user base that entered the beta testing pool for the first time earlier this year. This is said to be the last incremental update before we reach FSD beta 11, which is when the software goes to a single stack. That means all of the improvements made in FSD beta will finally be unlocked during highway driving. So far, the cars just revert back to regular FSD when they enter the highway, and beta is only active on city streets. With all of these new improvements functioning on the highway, Tesla should essentially reach a level 4 autonomy level of capability in that environment. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That is so important for getting our content out to more people. If you enjoy the content, then you'd probably also enjoy our weekly newsletter. So sign up with the link down below at theteslaspace.com. A huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters who are listed on the screen now. You help us make the best content we can, and we really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.